uh, a lot of my friends, when they ask me, what do you do, you know? And I tell them, well, you know, we're over here, you know, alongside the river, we're building a nice park for these people, you know? And so, oh, yeah. I think that it's important for all people to have a green and quiet place to be, someplace pretty. The Bronx River Restoration is the only visible program for revitalizing any part of the Bronx. The only program really seems to have a handle that's viable, that's workable, that is going to have a useful result. I wonder how long they're going to uh, leave that pile up there. So we undertook a survey of the whole river. Starts as a, a very small, bucolic, rustic brook. Wanders down through Westchester County and comes into the Bronx. changes into an urban river with uh, all the manifestations of urban impact. And it becomes navigable, it becomes larger, winds up as an estuary in the East River, a big place. All this in a span of 20 miles, and it's manageable. You can look at it and understand it and make plans to deal with it. The first thing we did was to build a workshop in our environmental arts center, and we're now building all the components for the mini park in that workshop. When I came here, man, it was it was something incredible because I saw this place here, and I just said, "Wow, man, what a mess!" Because this place was really a mess, you know. So I said, "Wow, man, we really got some work to do here," you know. At first, it was kind of hard, you know, adjusting to all the dust and dirt, you know. But uh, it started working out pretty good. They come in here green as grass. They're not even crowded out of the world of work. They've never been in it. They get crowded out. So we give them an opportunity to just test their own abilities. So we put them to work on things that they've never done before. And we show them how to do it. And we say, go, you know, and they do it. What I was looking for was a job, something which would bring in money and give me something interesting to do. But once I came here, I devoted my whole effort to it, and from the first day that I started working here, I've never felt that it was just a job. I'm very interested in what we're doing. The fact that we're building a park is a very fantastic bit of a thing. I mean, 50 years from now when I'm gone, that's going to be here. Most of them now have a certain sense of competency so that they feel they can attack something that somebody can give them an assignment and they can deal with it. Whereas before, they weren't able to do that. At first, I saw it as a job that had to be done in a I was going to go out there and do my best. I didn't think I was going to learn this much though, you know. I mean, I had a good idea of what I had to do already, you know, because I was already a little bit experienced at the time. But uh, I got to say, I learned a lot, man. It surprised me, you know. Welding I already knew. I used to weld boilers and that was really dirty, you know. But uh, this over here has given me a different point of view of welding, you know. This is a little bit cleaner than boilers. Fred, he didn't know how to weld. I taught him how to weld, you know. Bend the bars with the arc and everything, you know. You know, I've learned something since I've been here. And I found out that I can do more than I really thought I could do. I'm learning, you know, electrician. I can 
go on to become an electrician, you know. I'm learning plumbing. I can go on to become a plumber, you know. Working with the cement, you know, I can do that too. You know, so that's all different types of jobs that I can get. Five jobs that I know that I can get a job. So I wouldn't mind doing anything, any one of the things that I've learned in this program. By staying here and learning, you know, and trying to pick up something, you know, I'm making myself better, you know, making my chances better to succeed in life. The Mini Park will be our first completed project. That will provide us with a visible track record. Our Environmental Arts Center we hope also to have underway by the end of the summer. These two things we can point to and say, it's happening, this is what we're talking about, this is the kind of thing we want to develop uh, in other places. Right up until the earth movers came and started cutting away the underbrush and laying the contours of the park, I really didn't believe it was possible. <laughs> then all of a sudden, the contours which I'd been looking at on the plans were actually taking form outside. And we were actually putting pavers down and making walkways. And all of a sudden, the possibility and the probability of it lights up in front of me. It's fantastic to see that such things can actually happen. This will be our fifth summer of having young men and women from the community come out and work on the river. And I'll tell you, there is no way that those children will ever allow anybody to pollute that river again. They have really taken the river as their own. And of course, with the children out there working right in the middle of the community, and there's a bridge across the river there, the Tremont Avenue Bridge. And that bridge has always got sometimes two and three deep of the community residents watching their children working in the river. And so the whole community has taken that project to its heart. Some people are realizing they say, hey, you know, they're building a the park over here. You know, because at first it was just nothing but a piece of lot, you know, with garbage and stuff all over it. You know, and now it's going to be different, you know, and it's going to make the place even look different, you know. Because I've been to parks, and I've sat on benches, and I've played on game tables, and it's kind of fun to say, yeah, well, now I'm going to be making them, and everybody else is going to be sitting on them and playing on them. You know, so I get satisfaction out of that, you know, because it's something that's, you know, constructive. Remember, these youngsters now, most of them are from the South Bronx, where waste and destruction are commonplace. And uh, they have suddenly faced the fact that they have here a river which nobody paid any attention to before. And now all of a sudden to be told that this river is something of value, that this river is good. And to have them learn that and realize that is a tremendous thing. They're proud of what they do. What we're producing, really, is what will eventually be a green belt, a linear green belt. And a green belt up the middle of the Bronx, we feel, can create shockwaves on both sides. That's one of our main hopes, that we will be able to radiate out from the river and uh, bring life back into a lot of the communities up and down the river where life has been draining out. By bringing the river back to life, we will bring the community back to life. We are planning a set of river festivals, and these will be essentially to bring people in the river together so that they begin to realize the potential that the river has in a positive way to the community rather than to see it only as a throwaway place and as a dangerous place for their kids. I love that river. 
I'm more in love with that river today than I was when we first began pulling all the garbage out of it. It was a good experience, man. To think that a Rican and, and, you know, brothers, black brothers out from the street finally, you know, got a little chance to come out here and do something and show that even though we ain't been properly trained, we could do things, you know.